Bibles tonight, 2 Samuel chapter number 6, we began this chapter last week and we're continuing tonight and if you remember last week, David has decided now that he's the king of Israel, the, the entire kingdom and uh, he has moved his uh, central location to Jerusalem, it's time to bring the Ark of the Covenant and David makes a critical error in moving the Ark of the Covenant uh, and Instead of obeying God's way from the law and obeying God's word, David as king makes some concession and uh, he does things the wrong way. If you remember, the Old Testament law uh, declared that the Levite was to carry and bear on their shoulder the Ark of the Covenant. There were holes in the Ark of the Covenant uh, that held the uh, tablets of the Ten Commandments and held the manna and held the uh, cherubim and the mercy seat and uh, they ran poles through the holes in the bottom. And the Levites carried, were to bear any time that it was moved, it would be covered, and they were to bear on their shoulders the Ark of the Covenant. Well, David said, let's build a new cart, and let's, uh, let's bring the Ark of the Covenant. And if you remember the story, the, the Ark shifted when the ox uh, uh, jerked, and the, uh, uh, a man named Uzzah, Uzzah he, uh, he reached up and touched and tried to steal the Ark of the Covenant, and God killed him. And it was a, a, an evidence, it was a sign, it was something that needed to be uh, noted because if we don't do things God's way and we take matters into our own hands in contradiction of the Word of God, it's costly and there's a penalty. And so David has uh, taken his medicine and has uh, sent the Ark of the Covenant to the house of Obed-Edom and he begins the process of obeying the Lord. And he's going to obey the Lord and he's going to sacrifice the Lord. He's going to worship the Lord. And the Ark of the Covenant is going to be brought to Jerusalem. And there's going to be great celebration. And when I look at David celebrating because he's obeyed the Lord, I'm reminded of how much joy and how much reason there is to celebrate in all of our lives when we are obedient to the Lord. Uh, there are lots of reasons to be disappointed, sad, downhearted, scared even if you're a disobeying God. But when you're obeying the Lord, there's all kinds of reason to praise the Lord and glorify Him. And actually in this passage of Scripture, we're going to see David dancing before the Lord. This is not a message that's going to teach the church to worship through dance. And we'll just go ahead and deal with that briefly. In the, uh, in the New Testament, New Testament church, there's, uh, there's almost zero evidence that the New Testament church used dancing as a form of worship. So don't get any crazy ideas. But David in this instance, he was so thrilled by the glory of God, so thankful for the blessing of God that he couldn't help it. He danced before the Lord. And I'll tell you, there's no doubt times when the Spirit of God is so sweet in our lives that uh, you may just have to dance a jig in private. We're going to make it part of corporate worship. But uh, how many of you have ever been happy in Jesus and had to dance a little jig? And uh, I've done it before. I'm glad it's not on video. <laughs> David danced before the Lord. And I believe the emphasis of this text and this passage of Scripture that we're going to read in just a moment is really on the necessity and importance of God's children to not be ashamed of the Lord. To be bold in our enthusiasm for our Savior, Lord Jesus Christ. David danced before the Lord. Look with me, beginning in verse number 12 of 2 Samuel Chapter number 6, 2 Samuel 6, verse 12, the Bible says, And it was told King David, saying, The Lord hath blessed the house of Obed-Edom, and all that pertaineth unto him, because of the ark of God. So David went and brought up the ark of God from the house of Obed-Edom into the city of David with gladness. And it was so that when they that bear the ark of the Lord had gone six paces, he sacrificed oxen and fatlings. And David danced before the Lord with all his might. And David was girded with a linen ephod. So David and all the house of Israel brought up the ark of the Lord with shouting and with the sound of the trumpet. And as the ark of the Lord came into the city of David, 
Michael, Saul's daughter, looked through a window and saw her and saw King David leaping and dancing before the Lord. And she despised him in her heart. And they brought in the ark of the Lord and set it in his place in the midst of the tabernacle that David had pitched for it. And David offered burnt offerings and peace offerings before the Lord. And as soon as David had made an end of offering burnt offerings and peace offerings, he blessed the people in the name of the Lord of hosts. And he dealt among all the people, even among the whole multitude of Israel, as well to the women as men, to everyone a cake of bread and a good piece of flesh and a flagon of wine. So all the people departed, every one to his house. Then David returned to bless his household. And Michael, the daughter of Saul, came out to meet David and said, How glorious was the king of Israel today! who uncovered himself today in the eyes of the handmaids of his servants as one of the vain fellows shamelessly uncovered himself. And David said unto Michael, It was before the Lord which chose me before thy father and before all his house to appoint me ruler over the people of the Lord, over Israel. Therefore will I play before the Lord, and I will yet be more vile than thus. And will be base in mine own sight. And of the maid servants which thou hast spoken of, of them shall I be had in honor. Therefore Michael, the daughter of Saul, had no child unto the day of her death. We pay attention with me and look at the Bible in verse 14. The Bible says, David danced before the Lord with all his might. And David was girded with a linen ephod. David danced before the Lord. I think it's so important that God's people get to the place where they are unashamed of their relationship to the Lord Jesus Christ. Some of you are there. Some of you are battling with this at at the moment. Some of you have had seasons in life where the battle and the temptation to be ashamed of your faith has been greater than others. But I want you to know we need to get to the place where we can say like the Apostle Paul, I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. For it is the power of God and the salvation of everyone that believeth, to the Jew first and also the Greek. You see, it's not hard to be bold for the Lord Jesus Christ on Sunday mornings and Sunday nights and Wednesday nights at Chilhowee Baptist Church. But tomorrow morning we'll go to work. Tomorrow morning we'll go to school. Tomorrow we'll face and be in situations that are less accepting to our faith in Christ. And I wonder... Do you have a secret faith? If your faith is secretive or secret to the people you spend time with, it's not faith in Christ at all. And may we learn a little something from David tonight and be reminded that David danced before the Lord. Let's just begin here, number one. David's obedience and bold stance for God. In verse number 12, we see David changing from his disobedience, his his presuming upon God, his taking matters in his own hands to this place where he's ready to do things God's way. When you begin to do things God's way, you have every reason to look at the future through a bright lens. You know, there's lots of hope for God's people when they determine to do things God's way. You may testify that I've been trying to do things God's way and it doesn't seem to be getting any easier. Friend, I want you to know, keep doing things God's way and you have every reason to be hopeful because God is faithful. Trust Him. Obey Him. And David, you can watch the load lifted off of David because now's the time he's going to do things God's way, do things the right way, and his obedience is met here in verse number 12. The Bible says, It was told King David, saying, The Lord has blessed the house of Obed-Edom. Why did he send the Ark of the Covenant to Obed-Edom? He'd made a terrible mistake. He got these good old boys to haul that, uh, the Ark of the Covenant on a brand new cart. But God had said, No, 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 no. You do, Levites have to bear on their shoulders the Ark of the Covenant. And so the first thing that David did after Uzzah died, after touching the Ark of the Covenant, was he gave the Ark of the Covenant to some Levites. And then, after it had been in the house of Obed Edom for a time, he understands that God's blessing and 
blessing the house of Obed-Edom. And David went and brought up, verse 12, the ark of God from the house of Obed-Edom into the city of David with gladness. I like that word gladness. There have been numerous times in my Christian life where I've attempted to do things my way. And I'll just tell you, when I attempt to do things my way, when I decide, you know what, I'm going to do things the way I want to do them right now. I'm going to do what I want to do. I'm tough enough to suffer the consequences. You know what? That is never met with that sweet little word, gladness. I remember a season as a young teenager when I was really wanting to rebel against God. I remember thinking to myself, boy, I'm tough. I was a big, brawny boy, and I felt like I could do whatever I wanted to do. And I thought to myself, you know what? I'm going to do what I want to do because I'm tough enough to handle and deal with the consequences. But you know that spirit never produced gladness. It produced some bitterness. It produced some regrets. It produced some sorrow. It produced some worry in the lives of people that cared the most about me. But it never produced gladness. And folks, I'll have you know something. If you've decided to do things your way and leave God out, it's going to cost you. It's going to cost others. Earlier, David had done things his own way. He was well-meaning even. But he'd done things his own way and disregarded God's clear instruction. And it hurt him. It hurt the nation of Israel. And it hurt very specifically a young man named Uzzah. Uzzah. I'm calling him something different every time. Please forgive me. But it's never glad. It's never gladness. Now, I'm not telling you that if you'll follow Jesus, you'll never have any trouble. Because that's not true. I'm not telling you if you'll follow Jesus, it'll all be honey and no bees. Roses and no thorns. But I am telling you that you can serve Jesus. And if you obey God, you can rest in his promises and rest in his faithfulness. And gladness comes as part of being obedient to God and his word. What did David do? David went to the house of Obed-Edom because now's the time to bring the Ark of the Covenant. He's going to do things God's way. and When he's resolved to do things God's way, guess what happens? It comes with gladness. I like that word, gladness. David's obedience and bold stance for the Lord continues. In verse number 14, the Bible says, David danced before the Lord with all his might. And David was girded with a linen ephod. What did he do? He just... Got plum happy. His gladness produced this dancing. And I missed a verse, verse number 13. And it was so that when they that bear the ark of the Lord had gone six paces, he sacrificed oxen and fatling. This is something you need to see. David said, we're going to try to do this God's way. And he said, let's make it six steps. When they made it six paces and God hadn't struck anybody dead and everything was going the right way, everything was good, he said, right now is the time where we sacrifice to the Lord. The Old Testament sacrifice is an interesting thing. The sacrifice was always something sacrificed of value to the Lord. When we sacrifice to the Lord, we ascribe to the Lord value. And David here, when he obeys the Lord, he understands how valuable it is to be obedient to God. How valuable it is to worship God. How valuable it is to sacrifice to the Lord. David danced before the Lord. He's moved in his heart. You know, I like this dance to God. I like those moments when you can't help but Shout a little bit. I like those moments when you can't help but cry a little bit. Now, my temptation is if I'm blessed, there's some people, they get blessed and they want to say hallelujah and hoop and holler a little bit. And if God does it in your heart, obey him. It's fine. Me, personally, when the Lord's really moving in my heart and I sense a sweetness from the Lord and I have this moment where I, my heart is full. I mean, I am go from, oh, and I want to cry. <laughs> And that's how I am. But there have been times when the Lord has been so sweet and I've been it's been become so evident that God has been so good to me that I've had to shout to him and dance a little jig and praise his name. I'm thankful for those moments. And you know what? We shouldn't be ashamed of those moments. We shouldn't be ashamed to praise the Lord. We shouldn't be ashamed to acknowledge in our worship that God has been good. 
Now, here's something that you've got to know, though. We don't hoop and holler and shout in order to feel the presence of God. The hooping and hollering and shouting, if it happens, it's because God has made himself real to us in truth. The order is necessary. There's groups of people who get the music going just right. And, Amen. And I like it if it's spirit-filled. But if you get the organ going zoom, zoom, and everybody worked up, and you call that Jesus, look, you can get the same effect at a rock and roll concert because it's not Jesus, it's emotion. But I'll just tell you something. If God becomes real to you in his spirit and through the truth of God's word, and you get excited and want to say hallelujah, and run the aisle if you want to. That's fine. You make sure the order's right because you'll answer to God for the order in which you do it. We must know and we worship God in spirit and in truth. And if you get thrilled because what God's made real to you and you want to shout and holler and carry on, go for it. But if you think somehow shouting and hollering and carrying on is some spiritual act that brings Jesus into the room, you got the order wrong. And David here, he obeyed the Lord. He had disobeyed the Lord, and it was awful. But he obeyed the Lord, and God gave gladness in his heart. And they sacrificed the Lord, and God was working, God was moving. And in return, he couldn't stand it. He danced a jig. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. And all you know is that that's appropriate. And it's good to praise the Lord. It's good to worship the Lord. It's good to take a bold stand for the Lord. And David got to the place. He didn't care who saw that he loved God. He didn't care who saw that he was enthusiastically following and obeying and trusting Jehovah God. He didn't care. He took a bold stance for Jehovah God. The Bible says that he danced before the Lord. And the Bible says with all his might. How are we to, how are we to give ourselves with all of our might? He danced before the Lord with all of his might. And David was girded with a linen ephod. This is so important you pay attention to this. David did not reveal himself to the maidens, as we're going to see Michael blame him for in just a few minutes. He was dressed and clothed and appropriate in regards to modesty. But he was unashamedly enthusiastic for the Lord God. It's important we know it. Verse number 15, so David and all the house of Israel brought up the ark of the Lord with shouting and the sound of the trumpet. It's an exciting time. If you went with us to see David at Sight and Sound Theater, this, this is a scene in that production. It was fun to watch it, David dancing before the Lord. He was before the Lord shouting and people were worshiping the Lord with the sound of the trumpet. In verse number 16, the Bible says, And as the ark of the Lord came into the city of David... Michael, Saul's daughter, looked through a window and saw King David. What was he doing? Leaping and dancing before the Lord. <laughs> she despised him in her heart. There wasn't a thing wrong with what David was doing. He was leaping and dancing. I'm just telling you, he was bold. And he was coming out because Jesus had changed his life. He was coming out because God had proved himself able. He was coming out because he was relieved because he had returned from his disobedience to obedience and he was leaping and dancing before the Lord. Hallelujah. Do you think David was out of control? Absolutely not. I think David had just come to the place where he refused to be ashamed of God. Even if he was the king, even if he would be looked down as undignified, praising God was more important than anything else. The scripture continues, verse number 17. And they brought in the ark of the Lord and set in his place in the midst of the tabernacle that David had pitched for it. And David offered burnt offerings and peace offerings before the Lord. He says, I'm just going to keep worshiping. I'm going to keep worshiping. I'm going to keep offering. I'm going to show folks that I believe that God is worthy. And worth the effort and worth the expense and worth my offering. 
The Bible continues in verse 18. And as soon as David had made an end of offering burnt offerings and peace offerings, he blessed the people in the name of the Lord of hosts. I've highlighted that phrase. He blessed the people in the name of the Lord of hosts. When you obey God, when you boldly stand for God, it blesses other people around you too. And David in this setting, he blessed the people. And God blessed the people for their king and their king's obedience and bold stand. Verse 19, he dealt among all the people. He passed out. He dealt among all the people, even among the whole multitude of Israel, as well as to the women, as men, to everyone, a cake of bread, a good piece of flesh, and a flagon of wine. So all the people departed, everyone to his house. When David did things God's way, it blessed everybody. Verse 20, then David returned to bless his household. Now, what happened in this story? David obeyed the Lord and boldly stood for Jehovah God. He danced before the Lord. And it blessed lots of people. Now, I've said all that to say this. Are you ashamed of the Lord? Are you ashamed to speak up? For the character of God? Are you ashamed to speak up for the word of God? Are you ashamed to speak up for the cause of Christ? Are you ashamed to testify to what God has done in your heart? If you are, stop that mess. I remember as a kid, when I was little, my mom's had me singing since I was just knee high to a grasshopper. And and I'm thankful for that. And I remember as a kid, no, I mean, I sang all the time. Every time I was uh, around, I sang. We sang together. We sang in the car. We sang at the house. We sang at church. We sang. That's what we did, and I loved it. But I remember a young, early teenager, maybe not even quite a teenager, but 10, 11, 12 years old, I began to sit with some of the teenagers in our church at the time. And the first time I ever sat there, came time to sing. They announced the hymn number, and I got my book out. It's what I'd always done. Someone had showed me how, where the lines were, and how that worked. and I got the book, and I sang. And if you've ever been around me, when I sing, you can hear it. I got my book, Glory to His Name. I don't know what song it was, but we opened the book, and we started singing. I sang, and I noticed, (laughs) ain't nobody's on the aisle of cool teenagers singing. I was like, oh, man. I remember. I sang a little bit and realized what was going on. I closed my book, and I stood there like I'm not on a log with the cool kids. And I felt so bad. The next time I went to church, I sat with the cool kids, and I didn't sing. That happened two or three times, and finally, I just got to thinking about it. The Lord had saved me when I was eight. I'd been saved for two or three years, and I knew that God would made a difference in my life, and I got to thinking about it. Do I sing praises to Jesus, or do I hang out with the cool kids? And I got to think, the more I thought about it, the more I thought, you know what? I don't care what they think. And I remember I got my book out, and I've done lots of things wrong, but I remember I got my book out, and I remember I got to singing, and I didn't care what they thought. And next thing you know, one of my buddies got their book out and started singing. And the next service, one of them, the next one got to singing beside of them. And before you know it, we was all singing. And I just wonder, if you being ashamed... Are you being afraid that someone may look down on you because you're going to dance for Jesus, because you're going to stand up for Christ is causing and preventing other people from taking a bold stand for Christ, whether you're a teenager or a child or an adult? I'm just telling you, David obeyed God and boldly stood for the Lord. And he's glad he did. I looked up the word ashamed in the, new, in the, in the Bible. You'll never guess who used, uses the word ashamed more than anybody else in the writings of the Scripture. It's David himself. Just a few from the Psalms. Psalm 25, 
verses 2 and 3, the Bible says, Oh my God, I trust in thee. Let me not be ashamed. Let my, not mine enemies triumph over me. Yea, let none that wait on thee be ashamed. Let them be ashamed which transgress without cause. Verse 20 of Psalm 25, Oh, keep my soul and deliver me. Let me not be ashamed, for I put my trust in thee. Psalm 31, 1. In thee, O Lord, do I put my trust. Let me never be ashamed. Deliver me in thy righteousness. Verse 17 of Psalm 31. Let me not be ashamed, O Lord, for I have called upon thee. Let the wicked be ashamed and let them be silent in the grave. Psalm 119, 46. I will speak of thy testimonies also before kings and will not be ashamed. Psalm 119, verses, verse 116. Uphold me according unto thy word that I may live and let me not be ashamed of my hope. <laughs> Isn't that sweet? Let me not be ashamed of my hope. If you're tempted, like the little kid song, to hide your light under a bushel, shame on you. Don't be ashamed of the God who's promised to give you everlasting life. Don't be ashamed of the Christ who is willing to hang in shame on a cross and pay for your sins. Don't be ashamed. Stand up for Jesus. Stand up for Jesus. You'll be glad you did. David did. David danced before the Lord. Now, let me tell you something. It leads us to the second point. Standing up for Jesus is not all you start seeing and everybody else does too. You're going to have your critics. What happened to David? Even the king of the nation of Israel, the king called by God, anointed by God, ordained by God to be the king over God's people, even he, when he took a bold stand for the Lord, was criticized, maligned, and misunderstood. And it wasn't just anybody. It was his own wife. Let's consider number two. Michael's criticism. Michael's criticism. Look at the Bible says in verse 16. The Bible says. And as the ark of the Lord came into the city of David. David's leading the way with the ark of the Lord. The ark comes. And the Bible says. Michael, Saul's daughter, looked through a window. And saw King David leaping and dancing before the Lord. Now, the truth of the matter is, it's a good thing he's leaping and dancing before the Lord. He was thrilled because of what God had done in his life. But how did she respond? And she despised him in her heart. It's a fact, people. Now, when you take a bold stand for the Lord, you'll be misunderstood. You'll be mischaracterized. You'll be maligned, and that's okay. Michael despised David. And then we see in verse number 20. Then David returned to bless his household. Now David has just blessed all the men and women in the nation. And now he goes to bless his household. And the Bible says that Michael, the daughter of Saul, came out to meet David and said, How glorious was the king of Israel today. He speaks, she speaks to King David in the third person. You know, that's just a... That's just a a really a sarcastic way to communicate. How many of you have ever used this form of communication? Oh, boy, look at here. She says, oh, how glorious was the king of Israel today. She says, boy, you've really shown out today. Oh, how glorious was the king of Israel today who uncovered himself today in the eyes of the handmaids of his servants as one of the vain fellows shamelessly uncovers himself. Now, was David inappropriately uncovered? No, the Bible makes sure that we know that he was covered with a linen ephod. And there's other reason in Scripture to believe that he probably had a robe on top of that. But he was not inappropriate in his attire. But he wasn't acting stately and kingly. He was worshiping Jesus. And that was okay. But Michael said, you've done something awful. Let me encourage you. If people criticize you for your bold stand for the Lord, that's okay. That's okay. 
It's to be expected. Most of the time when you're criticized for your bold stand of the Lord, it has rooted in envy. Most of the time when you're criticized for your bold stand for the Lord, it's rooted in sinfulness. It's going to happen. It's okay. People are going to say some of the most awful things. Throughout my short Christian life, there's been many times where I've taken bold stands for the Lord and had to suffer the criticism for the stand. And that's okay. It's very minor in consideration of what my Savior's done for me. It's very minor in consideration of the gladness that God provided. And no doubt, it's a little discouraging when Michael came with her sarcasm and misunderstanding. But I'll tell you, David resolved in his heart that he would trust the Lord. I want to share with you a verse. Keep your finger in 2 Samuel chapter number 6. And I want you to go with me to the book of 1 Peter. 1 Peter chapter number 1. Hebrews, James, Peter. 1 Peter chapter number 2, excuse me. And I want you to see this verse in your Bibles. It's easy to be misunderstood and miscategorized and maligned. But this verse gives us great hope. 1 Peter chapter 2 and verse number 15. Here's what the Bible says. Look at it with me. For so is the will of God, that with well-doing you may put to silence the ignorance of foolish men. Out in the world, when I take a bold stand for the Lord and the Michaels in my life show up and criticize me, how do I deal with that? You know what our flesh wants to do, right? Our flesh wants to get even. Our flesh wants to let them have it. Our flesh wants to make an argument and fuss and fight and feud. And unfortunately, there's lots of people in the name of Christianity like to fight and fuss all the time, and it does no good for the cause of Christ and the furtherance of the gospel. But Peter said, let me tell you how to deal with that. For so is the will of God that with well-doing, by just keeping doing the right thing, the well-doing, you may put to silence the ignorance of foolish men. How do you deal with your critics? Punch them all in the face, right? No. How do you deal with your critics? Long, drawn out Facebook posts. That's how you deal with critics, right? No. It's actually a YouTube video. I'm just, no, it's not that either. How do you deal with your critics? I'll tell you. You just keep doing what's right. You just keep doing what's right. And in time, God will silence the ignorance of foolish men. You know what you have to do with your critics? You have to trust God with them. And I want you to see what David does. It leads us to our third point. We move from Michael's criticism to David's resolve. Here's what he says in verse 21. David said unto Michael, It was before the Lord. She says, You danced before those women inappropriately. He said, No, I didn't. I danced before the Lord. He said, what I did was for God. He said, I'm going to please the Lord. I'm going to please. It was for the Lord. He said, this was for the Lord because the Lord chose me. The Lord was good to me. The Lord which chose me before thy father and before all his house to appoint me ruler over the people of the Lord over Israel. Therefore will I play before the Lord. He said, I did it before the Lord and I'm going to keep worshiping the Lord. You know, when you face your critics, you know what you're tempted to do? You're tempted to stop your bold stance for the Lord. May we learn from David. David says, I did it before the Lord and I'm going to keep dancing before the Lord. I stood up for Jesus and I'm going to keep standing up for Jesus. And you can keep trying to discourage me. But it's God that's worked in my heart. It's God that's created me. It's God that saved me. And I'm going to praise his holy name. What did he do? He just kept on keeping on. He says, I'm going to please the Lord first. He says, and that's not all. In verse number 22, look at it with me. 
He tells Michael, he says, I did it before the Lord. And I will continue to play before the Lord. In verse 22, he says, and I will yet be more vile than thus. But what's he mean? He says, if God wants me to make a bigger fool of myself, I'll do that too. I'm not going to be ashamed of the Lord. I'm not going to be ashamed, Lord. I'm going to stand boldly for him. I'm going to stand boldly for him. He said, I will be yet, I will yet be more vile than thus and will be base in my own sight. He says, I'll even be uh, ridiculous in my own sight if that's what God requires. And he says, in in the matter of the maidservants, he doesn't leave that alone. Here's what he says. He says, and of the maidservants which thou hast spoken of, of them shall I be had in honor. You know what the maid servants were doing? David was dancing, singing praises of the Lord, and they were too. These were people who were praising the Lord. These were people who were blessed of God. Now Michael looked down on them because she felt that they were some lower form of human. But God was blessing the maid servants, and David had blessed the maid servants, all the men and all the women. And the people that were blessed of God, David said, when I praise the Lord, the people that are blessed of God, these maid servants, he said, in their eyes and before them, I will be esteemed and held up in honor. Do you know what we spend our time doing? We're ashamed of our Savior because we don't want some fancy pants person to hold us in low esteem. We keep our mouths shut when we could boldly stand for the Lord because we don't want some people to think something that we're weird. Let me just tell you something. People already think you're weird. You might as well praise Jesus and let them keep thinking you're weird. We're all weird. Especially, yeah, we're all weird. But David made a choice. He said, you know what? I can be worried about Michael, who God's not going to bless. As a matter of fact, the Bible tells us that God doesn't bless Michael ever again. It's what it says in verse 23. You see it? Therefore, Michael, the daughter of Saul, had no child unto the day of her death. The first thing you want to think about this is David never went back to his wife. But I don't, it doesn't say that. At this moment in history and the, the, the culture of the day, God's blessing was associated with the ability to bear children. And because Michael was ashamed of God, she lost the blessing of God. And you know what David had to decide? David had to decide, I can praise God, I can dance before the Lord. And I'll be held to higher esteem in the eyes of these maid servants who are blessed of God. Or I can retract and withdraw and maybe I can make Michael, who is not blessed of God, pleased with me. It's shameful to think about how many times we failed to boldly proclaim our faith in Christ because we didn't want somebody that God is not blessing to think highly of us. <laughs> hey, listen. If I praise the Lord and give glory to my Savior and it upsets somebody, that's their problem. I'm not going to be inappropriate. I'm going to be unkind. I'm going to be obnoxious. But if I praise my Savior and it offends somebody, that's not my, I can't stop praising Jesus because somebody got offended. Because you know what happens? When you stop praising Jesus because somebody got offended, you miss the opportunity to be a blessing and an influence to the people who because you've praised Jesus, because you've stood boldly for the cause of Christ, will hold you in honor. That's the decision that David made. You know what David decided? He said, I've messed up in the past, but from now on, for the Lord's help, I'm going to dance before the Lord. I'm going to praise him. I'm going to unashamedly identify with him. I'm going to enthusiastically represent my God, my Savior, my Creator. You know what? We need to get into the same mindset as the man after God's own heart and decide, Lord, with your help, I'm not going to be ashamed. Lord, with your help, I'm not going to be ashamed. 
When I go to school, I'm not going to be ashamed of you and what you've done in my life. I'm going to tell people. At work, I'm not going to be ashamed. I'm going to take every chance I get to praise your name and witness of your work in my heart and my life. And like David, I'm going to dance before the Lord. That's what David did. May we learn from him.